Welcome to the Keen on Yoga podcast, bringing you the stories of many people who in various ways are attempting to walk the path of yoga. Our intention is to inspire your own practice and commitment to yoga beyond the mat and in all areas of life. We consider this an offering, a service to the community and labour of love. If you feel inclined, any donations are appreciated, just visit our page and click the donate button at www.keelonyoga.co.uk forward slash podcast. I hope you enjoy the show. Dharma was born in 1939 in Brazil. He started studying yoga in 1958 and was teaching since 1967. In 1964, he left the Brazilian Air Force and moved to New York City to study with his guru, Swami Gupta or Swami Kailashananda, as he's probably known. After intensive study of Ashtanga, Patanjali Yoga and Karma Yoga, he was accepted and initiated as a, as a Brahmanacharya, a sannyasin, a celibate. Dharma began teaching in 1967, as I mentioned. In 1975, he founded the Dharma Yoga Center. Dharma Yoga is based on ahimsa, compassion, and a particular rooting in the yamas and niyamas of moral conduct. Dharma Mitra is famous for completing his master yoga chart of 980 postures in 1984, and it hangs on so many studio walls around the world. He has recently published in t- uh, a book entitled Asanas, 608 Yoga Poses. And in 2006, he released an instructional yoga video series entitled The Mahasadana, The Great Practice. So I'm deeply humbled and uh, appreciative of Dharma Mitra on our podcast today. Welcome, Dharma. <laughs> May all beings everywhere be happy and free. I am ready. <laughs> uh, welcome to the podcast, Dharma. You are. Uh, thank you for that. <laughs> um, can you just give a brief overview of how you came to yoga and how you first started and found a teacher? Well, a long time ago, before yoga, I was not, I was not too happy, full of doubts. I remember I love my mom. My mom at that time was my only thing, but at the same time, I could visualize, see, predict that very soon she'll be gone. <laughs> Right. And then I have religion also that brought me lots of fear. If you don't follow this, if you yeah. don't achieve this, you go to hell forever. <laughs> that was terrible. Lots of pain and suffering. Well, because nobody can follow anything. It's so difficult to follow all the rules. To be ethically civilized is so difficult. I was expecting that. Also, my religion did not offer any reincarnation. (laughs) Just in case you can't achieve your goal, that's it. No more opportunity. Right, yeah. Then what about the unconditioned love of God? That's it. Send people to hell for us. So I had lots of doubt. And fortunately, I have a younger brother who had lots of yoga books. <laughs> One day he lent me a book. It's called Muni Sadhu, Days of Peace, describing the samadhi, the bliss that is generated according to the based on realization. When you realize what you really are, what you is ahead of you, everything the way it is, it generates this bliss. And then I was really like, that's it. <laughs> I think I, and then I read the book and then I saw some notions, uh, 
about the essence of yoga, the essence of life, the way it is, not in a fancy way. Everything follow, following the natural laws. And then I start doing some practice through the books, because at that time, there was no teacher available at that time. Mm. And amazingly, my younger brother came to the United States. <laughs> and he immediately, on 1962, met the guru. At that time, all the gurus was coming from India. <laughs> Everything the right time, right place. Mm -hmm. After he met the guru, he was really happy and wrote to me, please, if you want to come, I found a guru here, you can meet him, I'll support you here, you may come. I was extremely lucky because when in 1964, I quit the Air Force, I was in the Air Force, mm -hmm. I quit and came. Just after I came, the government closed. No more people allowed to immigrate or to go. I was really lucky. So I, after five years, after two years, excuse me, when I arrived here, I met my guru immediately. He has to make the translation for me because I couldn't speak anything. And then I start getting full time, being obedient to him. So I met him. I also realized as soon as I saw him, that that's it. I like him. Hmm. I was really faithful to him. What was it you liked in the teachings? What was it that appealed in the teachings of yoga as, a, as different to Catholicism? And what was it that you felt, and um, your teacher was uh, Swami Gupta, is that right? What, yes. What was, it that, what was it that struck you about that man? Um, well, this struck you was like the, the traditional way to teach yoga. But every student who become a teacher, according to their condition, they emphasize whatever, according to the teacher. In my case, I emphasize the essence of yoga. What is at the end that you have to tune your mind with your guru because it is, it can, it can only be imparted psychically. And also what is ahead of self-realization? It is not just like most beliefs. You go to be with the gods, you don't have to come here anymore. I realized something else through other scriptures that goes beyond the, how to say, where most yogis come to an end, self-realization. It goes beyond that. What is ahead? Self-realization after that is the end of pain and suffering. But there is the beginning of amazing pain, <laughs> the meaning of life, to experience amazing things ahead of us. Of course, we are already self-realized. We know what we are, is the Atma. But the ego, we have to hold the ego forever. And every time you return, better and better. I mean, to experience the Lord manifestation. According to the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord manifestation is endless, infinite, subtle, subtle. According to the Bhagavad Gita, in future, as we evolve, and get a better instrument. We are, we'll become angels and the gods and higher and higher to participate in creation. You understand? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I myself, I am so eager to leave this body <laughs> because the next life I must can see it. I'll be teaching space fiction. I think so. With what you've done in this body, I think you'll what? be, you know, I mean, if you're going to better that, I think you're, you're definitely going to be pretty high up there, yeah. Yeah, the cell phone is going to be amazing. <laughs> there be. is no more virus. The planet will be in harmony. All the is going back because people are getting more and more ethically mm -hmm. civilized. And then I'll be able to, the ego, the ego is still here. I want to see everything ahead of us. I want to see this planet 20 years, 20,000 years from now, and, and passing through all these beautiful things. Anyway, we emphasize compassion because it is the foundation of everything. I hate to, to be compassionate, to respect, to be, mm. and then automatically we feel more peace. Our conscience are clear. And Just then we have more enthusiasm towards the practice. We become vegetarian through compassion. Because the action of compassion is to see yourself in a call and you see the same. All bees love life. <laughs> they want to be happy like us. And then automatically you get, we get healthier. We become more obedient to the teacher for some reason. And compassion triggers something inside your compassion. The senses of perception become really, how to say, sensitive. Right. You'll be able to sense sort of thing, the presence of this intelligence. You don't have to believe anymore because we sense what is controlling everything, and we are also part of it. So we sense that. And then we get serious about the, the practice. So I emphasize compassion, get healthy first. If these are the preliminary, preliminaries of the practice. What, what is the practice of Dharma Yoga? Just to backtrack for people that don't know how to, to practice, what is your practice? You mean my own portion of No, practice? no, how? Oh, the practice of yeah. Dharma Yoga, yeah. they call it. Yeah, exactly, yes. Yes. Yeah. The main thing is to do pleasant poses. It's not to go, unless your body is fit to do a fancy pose. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is to keep yama, the ethical conduct we emphasize, get the knowledge, the only knowledge available, the best self knowledge, Atma Bodhi. Be faithful to your teacher, faithful, obedient. <laughs> and then the practice starts with the asanas and pranayama first. Right, so pranayama from the start is important. Yeah, only, we emphasize here only one main pranayama. All the others are for conditions. Right, okay. But the main one, the one that will bring the prana up. And then your consciousness expands is the alternate breathing. We emphasize, master the alternate breathing. The asana is not, is not that important. Right. But if your body is fit to do it, do it. If not, you have to go to the gym and go in be good shape. You do. Go to That's the gym, important. Do often art, martial arts, do anything, right. but you have to move. <laughs> Right, right. And get busy with Atma Bodhi. And be obedient to your teacher. Ask questions. What is it? You come back a lot to the obedience and the, the, the kind of the, the kind of old fashioned idea of devotional to the teacher attitude. What's the importance of that? Why, why does one need that in practice so much? Oh, devotion is amazing. As we keep the ethical rules, become more ethically civilized, <laughs> automatically we sense that devotion, 
There are infinite of beings. Creation has no beginning. There are beings who went infinitely back to the past. At this moment, they are amazingly high, the gods. Mm. The gods are manifestation of this being. We call it God, but I don't like to say name God. This intelligence. So they manifest in his manifestation, beings like us. But they are high. We need their help. There are infinite numbers of these beings here. We cannot see it. It's available. But in order to go through this process, we have to, there are, let's say, infinite numbers of celestial doctors, celestial teachers, the physical teachers, we can contact them here, but there are higher beings who went before us. They are in different levels. So there are, we need lots of prayer and help from these beings. We pray for the teacher. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We respect this force. I usually like the name force because the God, God himself, the way people think it don't exist, is this force. They manifest in other beings, the gods. Like most people, most religion believe in the God creator. So it's the beings who project creations. So we need our lots of help, divine help and divine, and show respect for this day, lots of devotion. Devotion means also belief, faith, concentration, respect, loyalty. Right. So what I mean, if you're not that Committed, committed to the asana as something kind of esoteric. If you could easily go to the gym, right? And the pranayama is quite basic. In the method itself, in technique sense, is quite simplistic that you're offering, right? It's something other that you're focusing on, something kind of more subtle that's lying behind asana and breathing, if that's right. Right. Well, according to the condition of everybody, your physical condition, also, your conditions from the past. Many of us are old souls, are ethically more civilized, evolved, is naturally. According to karma's impressions from the past, some of them will not allow us to do many of the asanas. <laughs> According to your condition, also, you have some problem with your family, friends, habits, <laughs> you are not able to do asana, but everyone can easily do the pranayama. It's more important than the asana. So get busy with the pranayama to control your emotions, to control the mind, and then you'll be able to gradually become more self-controlled. You'll be able to follow the instructions. Mm -hmm. So everybody's different. Some people don't need much of the asanas to achieve the goal. Like the Hare Krishna, he used devotion, mm. bhakti. But they have to do something else to move well. Mm. So everybody's different. Some people use more asanas. You need the body. That's important. Oh, yeah. Look, there are saints right now who are self-realized. I know one that had a stroke for some reason, and the stroke damaged some senses of pleasure. You know, you know the same, the brain is the center of everything, the senses of pleasure that allow us to experience bliss from your meditation, happiness. So he damaged some brain. But he still able to say, where is those blessed? It's gone. Of course, it is inside but cannot manifest. He already realized he is one with the forces. But he cannot physically, the bliss cannot manifest through the body. 
You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So despite of all your knowledge, all your belief from the gods, all your love from the, the gods, mm. if the instrument, your instrument is damaged by junk food, drugs, alcohol, all kinds of stupidity, your self-realization is there, but it cannot manifest. Mm, mm. So you are terrible. Let's say if I was stuck with bad food, mm. how can I talk to you right now? Mm, mm. Nothing would come, nothing would not be available. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. So everybody is different according to conditions. You have to be healthy. Eat. No, become a vegetarian. <laughs> then you never see a doctor. Again. <laughs> Can you uh, briefly? I know that you are very committed. Uh, pretty much, you're a vegan, aren't you? I think. And and also, I read mainly raw food is important. Um, can you speak briefly about like your feelings about diet? Diet, as I said, Mark, if you eat incorrectly, your senses of perception, your nerve system, your brain. Your senses of enjoyment are not, how to say, in good condition, healthy. You are, how to say, you don't have much enthusiasm in order to cope with your household obligation, with your spiritual obligation, especially for the yogis, sharing the way. <laughs> so the diet is extremely important. Do you want to find out how civil, ethically civilized we are here in this planet? How evolved? The way we eat and treat the animals. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that's why the aliens don't land here. Before they land, they come down, they have powerful telescopes. They zoom into the Burger King, <laughs> McDonald's, and they say, oh my goodness, people here are still eating animals. How can I share them the knowledge of the flying saucer? <laughs> <laughs> they are going to come back in our planet and, and making us food. <laughs> no. And you are very importantly committed to ahimsa and, and non-harming animals. I mean, it might seem obvious to most people, but can you explain why that is? Remember the action of compassion. Like I emphasize my students, meditate occasionally on compassion. Mm -hmm. And then some student come, what is how? <laughs> well, the action of compassion is to place yourself in others. Let's say you have someone that you really love. Every time they are in pain, right, you immediately place yourself there, force yourself, you see the pain. It hurts more on us than on them. <laughs> so it is the first step of self-realization to realize that the self is an all. Not only movables, oh, even a plant. Right. Even the planet is a being. We have to respect it. Don't pollute it. Be nice to mm it. -hmm. So the action of compassion is to place yourself in outreach. Mm -hmm. And then automatically, how can you eat meat? Impossible. Because you place yourself on the other side and immediately you you lose that desire. Mm. Many people become vegetarian, but they don't know the knowledge, but they still hold the craving. Right. But when you see the self, the other side, mm. it's like your children. With this knowledge, you see all beings like a child. When you eat a cow, it's like eating your own child. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So that is very easy. Just meditate and put all the action together. Okay. And then you realize what to do. And specific instructions? I mean, 
I know people would want to know how how you've eaten over the years because, I mean, due to karmic reasons, you might say, but nevertheless, you've had an amazing uh, physical practice for so many years. You're a paradigm of health. What is your What are your tips? Your actual specific tips for diet? Well, diet has to be changed slowly. I remember in my case, 1960, or in the late 50s, I stopped eating flesh. <laughs> I kept only with the shrimp and the fish. <laughs> but after a while, I start, uh, and then I removed that. I could not eat them anymore, like flesh and cadaver. I kept the eggs. After another year, I start pondering, realizing egg is just an embryo. Uh, and then I could not eat it anymore. I kept with the mozzarella and the cheese. Yeah. I remember in the early 60s, uh, 70s, I still eat mozzarella a lot. You got it right. It's so nice. But then a Swami came to me and said, you know what you're eating? A pile of milkers. Yeah. That's why you cannot succeed in your pranayama. Hmm. In order to succeed in pranayama, you have to give up the dairy, the milk, all products. And then gradually I remove the milk, the mozzarella. I could visualize the liquid that was in the veins of the cow, all the liquids. And then I keep thinking, eating a yogi, eating all this liquid and milk from cow, that is not ethical. <laughs> you understand? And then I push away. Okay. I was interested in an interview I read when you said you, you eat a lot of raw foods. It's not your, I think your Swami told you, don't cook too much. Don't cook things too much. Well, you cook too much. Like milk is, comes from, most from dairy. But if you cook food too much, the cells die. It generates a milk. Is, look like egg white, egg white. And milk is in your system. You understand? It's bad food. My guru suggests cook most, not all. Most of your food here, this is your pot, your stomach. Okay, cooking from your stomach, yeah, yeah. When you're cooking the food, you see the, the smell that going out, the fragrance. <laughs> That is the best of the food going out. Okay. When you eat the leftover just for pleasure, the thoughts for your sense, it tastes nice. Fried food tastes so nice, but you're not eating anything. Your body is going to waste lots of energy to put that inside to throw it out. Most goes out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so most of the food should be, let's say, half cooked. Don't cook too much, just to make it soft enough. Mm. Let's say when you're eating a potato, not going too far to disappear. Cabbage, you steam them just enough to be okay. pleasant, mm -hmm. not cooking and dissolving. Mm -hmm. Like broccoli, some people cook too much, yeah. it smells bad, become mushy. You're in big trouble. <laughs> what did you? But what have you eaten for? I mean, you, you know, you built a lot of that muscle. What did you eat for your proteins? All oh, technology today is amazing. Remember, technology is from the gods. As we evolved, become more and more, how to say, responsible. Technology helps us to feel more comfortable. Today, I found out here there is a, a company who put all the ingredients that the body needs in this delicious shake. 
Stał proteinszyk. Okay. Food, how to say? Superfood. So I buy this container. I mix with my blend. My blend usually is made of one avocado, one banana, two scoop of this beautiful stuff <laughs> twice a day. Okay. And then you're happy because you have all the body you need. You don't gain much weight, but you are strong enough. Right? Like I am, I, almost 83 years old. Oh my God. The body is still, yeah. except yeah. the face. <laughs> but still, Wait. some muscles are left. Yeah. Oh, I've seen you recently. Yeah, absolutely you are. Um, but you're, not, the, you're eating for pleasure then. It's not a pleasurable thing. Oh, eat. the other rest. I love uh, vegan pizza. Okay. <laughs> there are vegan pizza. Remember, most of the vegan food today are junk food. Yeah. So make sure you get a nice, when you are miserable, you understand? Yeah. Eat a vegan pizza. Okay. There is a vegan pasta. Don't be afraid. <laughs> you understand? It's yeah. better than hold and feel miserable. No. It tends, you lose all your friends. Mm. You may even lose your job mm. because you're so tense. You want to follow the instructions to become vegan all the time. No, you're vegan here. Yeah. I sometimes touch a piece of chocolate. Oh my God. <laughs> I know, I know there is some milk there. Okay, right. Just a... You understand? But yeah. that's yeah. just once every three months. <laughs> I'm not holding anything like that. But do I feel miserable? How can I be, how to say, enthusiastic about yes. teaching, about talking to you? Yeah. It seems to so, me that a lot of your teachings are very practically based. And on, on doing a little bit of uh, research on the, on the Dharma Yoga methodology, it seems to be underpinned by the ethics, which you've touched on as well. This importance of following ethics in the world. Can you kind of expand on that a bit? Well, ethics is like, let's say we are now in the spiritual evolution. It's like building a big building. The ethical conduct is like the foundation. Okay. It has all the connection for the building, the concrete, the roots, going deep enough, be nice, compassionate to all these, all the connection for the electricity, the, the water, the sewage, for the internet. <laughs> and then we start building the other part. We start doing the breathing to get more control. We start going to the high part of yoga, spiritual knowledge. How I remember once I start building up here, going to breathing in order to gain some psychic powers, but I was not, the foundation was not ready. I was trying to go into God, oh, I become Him now, into all this being, but I was not, the foundation was not good. I was selfish. <laughs> I have a trace of ego. My diet was not correct. My compassion was not that good. So I went up there. I was so proud. And then one day, boom, I fell down. Right. Oh, I don't eat this anymore. I, I stopped smoking. I was so proud to feel like that. Right. One, and then I saw the other people smoking, doing this. I was so proud. And then one day I said, I can't hold it anymore. Because the foundation, I right. had no connection. Mm -hmm. I fell. I remember it was 1967 or so. <laughs> and then it was very hard. I started building the foundation first. How do you do that? Though? How do you build a foundation? I mean, how do you instruct your... I mean, you're obviously a very hands-on teacher in terms of giving people conduct more than asana, but in their life. How, how do you do that? Very easy. You go to Iyama, like the Dhammapada from the Lord Buddha. 
Yes, sir. How do you teach someone it? How do you yes. teach another person ethics? How do you teach that, non harm? Yes. When you go into that, it's so easy, so beautiful, put together, and immediately you say, Oh, it makes sense. It's so nice. I have to do this. Oh, I was so selfish here. I have to be more compassionate to beings. And then you see also the, con the consequence. If you treat people bad, animals, you can see the karma. What you're going to get? It. <laughs> the, the side effects. Mm -hmm. And then you, you become more serious about it. You mm. understand? But it's very easy. Follow compassion, see the action of compassion, and then gradually you go to the next step. Thou shall not steal, thou shall not lie, thou shall not hoard, hoard too many things. <laughs> what if people have trouble with this? What if people don't immediately or have really overwhelming desires to do certain things and they're not and act unethically? How can you help them not to? Well, everyone has to fulfill all their desires. Okay. <laughs> By reading a little bit of the scriptures, the yama, niyama, you can see the results all of all the desires. And all the souls who are practicing yoga and looking for liberation, the end of this pain and suffering, automatically they start moving to the next step. They start being more serious about not hurting others. Also, you're going to hear that it is by making others happy that we can be happy. You understand? We and then gradually start changing, seeing that compassion mm. <laughs> is the foundation, and you see yourselves everywhere. And then gradually you start by inner intuition <clears throat> going into other scriptures according to your degree, your level of in how to say, spirituality. The older, the age of our age, the age of our, of our selves, not the body. There are all the souls who are seeking higher things. Automatically start leading to other scriptures. You go into the Bhagavad Gita, and then you go to what? The philosophy of yoga, the yoga sutras to learn how the mind function. The Yoga Sutra also is beautiful. They put all the limbs of yoga where you progress slowly. It does have say effects to all conditions. According to all conditions, some people emphasize more the first step. The other one is more on the third. Some, all the souls, do not need any step, maybe just the last one. Mm. They are, are about to mm. get self-realized. They can easily tune themselves into the supreme picture because they just need the psychic connection. All the other part was already done in the previous lives. Mm -hmm. If you don't accept reincarnation, you cannot understand all this. Divine evolution. Everybody keep evolving. <laughs> I think you're known for being a brahmacharya for many years, and you've spoken on its importance. Um, do you think it's important for everyone? And, and why is it important? Because it's not something or, people fancy doing immediately. <laughs> well, uh, let's say you are all the souls. You are really seeking liberation. You are, you are trying to even sacrifice yourself. I don't want to get now to get this. You renounce the world in order to get self-realized. 
And then you have to save your sexual energy. <laughs> you understand? Avoid temptations like some food may excite your senses. And um, watching TV or sexual stuff may excite your senses. And then you may lose control. And that will disturb your practice. So there are food that has to be avoided. But in our case here, the way I emphasize to everybody, it's not only being celibate. The real brahmacharya is to be serious about this being, to find out who we are, to be nice to all beings, this devotion to life, to make others happy. Also to be moderate in sexual things. Of course, when you are desperate, alone, <laughs> right? When you're really alone, desperately miserable, you start going to drugs, <laughs> right? Meet your spouse, meet your friend, but save the energy. <laughs> it's not wrong. That's why. Thank you. God, they say, God make Eve for Adam. <laughs> Adam was so alone, desperate, about to take drugs, and then the Lord came and made Eve. Sure, people can make spiritual progress faster because you're not alone. Of course, both are up there together. You understand? Not having sex, but the company to be near your teacher, to be near your loved one, but you're mm. not attached to them. Mm -hmm. Celibacy means the household obligation. Be nice to your pets, to your guests. Right? To your pets means don't be eating your pets. Don't, don't be eating them. <laughs> what, what, what about the physical? You don't have to be physically celibate then? No. No. Of course. We have to say, at reach a point with understanding of compassion, a yogi, with your eyes, you can see all women as Virgin Mary, as your sister. Remember, the love is different. The love that you have to your mother, your sister, is different than the one that you have to your girlfriend. <laughs> I would hope, yeah. But as you go into <laughs> compassion, you become more spiritual. You become so friendly with your spouse. Mm. You don't have that sexual sense of thing to her anymore. You no. become like you have the respect, the love, mm. the natural love. Mm. That's the, the main love. <laughs> mm. You've also talked about before about... um obstacles to practice and your obstacle being when you came to the US being alone and struggling and turning to food um, is that your main I mean what would you would you say that was your main obstacle to practice and how did you overcome these kind of let's say it wasn't an addiction but how do you overcome these these pulls these these oh, uh, I, I don't like even to remember how much pain <laughs> but I have this Fire inside the belief that I have in my guru, what's ahead of us, all this bliss of samadhi, realization, that hold me on. But the pain inside was burning. No more family. <laughs> you understand? No mm. friends. Mm. Even my brother went away <laughs> that I love here. He left and said, physical contact doesn't mean anything, but for me it was terrible. Living alone, no speaking English, and alone here in this world, that was terrible. Yeah. But that, my guru, I consider my guru like a high being, like the gods. <laughs> that hold me. But I had lots of problems in the beginning. Since I didn't have happiness from outside, family, my brother, 
At that time, we didn't have an internet mm-hmm. or TV. I yeah. had a whole TV there, black and white, but it was so terrible. My only pleasure from the TV was watching Tom and Jerry, the cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the other pleasure was coming from food. But at that time, I was very obedient to my guru, eating only vegan. <laughs> but inside, they had this burning with mozzarella, cheese, the food that I love. Yeah. And I have no other pleasures waiting to see my guru. I could not speak English well. And then gradually start understanding a little few lines. But my pleasures was longing, attachment, people, family. But it took a few years to wear out slowly. Mm-hmm. It gradually. But remember, you are falling out of the path. Yes. Sometimes, I just after three years, I could not hold. I came down. All the habits returned. Right. I remember once, either I ate egg once or twice, uh, mozzarella, <laughs> candies. I love candies. Going to movies, even porn movies, because I come oh out of there. <laughs> Fire of um, sex. Yeah, the fire of sex will yeah, yeah. torment you like hell. <laughs> but right. get out. Sometimes I participate in that, but crying at the same time. I go to my guru and say, Oh Lord, I cannot keep anything. He said to me, As long as you are making effort not to do it, don't worry, my son. <laughs> Even if you fail. Yeah, that is your own uh, okay. stuff from the past, attachment. And how did you get to, I mean, how did you come from that place? And people will want to know how you started becoming the world-renowned teacher that you are. How did that happen? Well, there are two ways. If, if your soul is old enough, you are seeking to find out what you really are. What is this they call it God that is controlling everything? You have this desire to find that. <laughs> now, there are many people according to condition, they are not seeking the essence of yoga. They are doing yoga to relieve some pain, suffering, to remove maybe some doubt. But they are not seeking enlightenment to find out what you really are, where you're going, what God is. Mm. Many people are seeking only maybe heaven. Mm. Like most religions promise mm. heaven, but not to tell us who, what we are. Mm. <laughs> what is beyond form is a name. What is ahead beyond self-realization? So everybody is different. So according to your condition, automatically, by inner intuition, you be- become more serious about breathing in order to become self-control. That's the problem. One of the obstacles in front of us, lack of self-control. You right. can't eat correctly, and then you cannot keep your practice. You know, be steady on the practice. So <laughs> does then, pleasure, does the wish for pleasure get in the way of practice? Yeah, that's the and everybody's different. Some people are the food cannot the craving for food do not leave them alone. Some other yogis, according to their condition, they they can easily control their food, but they are attached to sex. (laughs) Or maybe other ones are not disturbed by sex and food, but they want power, fame, prestige, Mm -hmm. to become the most famous yogi in the world. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Not a yogi, if they have that desire, 
there is something that still has to be purified there. A real yogi don't have desire to be a famous or whatever. It comes by itself. <laughs> so everybody is different. Some people are more serious about most yogi want, wants to go only up to samadhi to enjoy, enjoy undying bliss. But the real yogi who went to the scriptures, there are other scriptures that goes where yoga left <laughs> the stuff from their head. Like, like which ones? Oh, there are many scriptures. Some of them are called Ahvaduta Gita, Astravaka Samhita. A teaching that goes a little bit beyond where most people left it up to heaven. <laughs> but in intuition, the scripture will be available for you. Remember when you are ready, the guru appear for you according to your vibration and conditions. Mysteriously, the gods, I don't know what this, all these beings, find the way. <laughs> You don't see it. You are guided to that knowledge. And then, it, oh, it makes sense. That's it. So I believe that everything, there is no fancy thing. It follows prakriti, the laws, the natural laws of nature. So you would say you never, you never tried to be a teacher. It just kind of happened to you that you got to be the... No, I never in my life thought in doing yoga or end up here in the United States. Everything is just amazing. It's led by itself. I didn't make any effort to be here. Right. To stop reading this, to stop everything. Everything just keep happening. <laughs> there is a point during this path well, you become like, just go with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't stop anything. Yeah. They call it dharma, your own tendency. Everything's perfect. Mm -hmm. But I am not identified with anything. I can see my mind making decisions, but at the same time, the mind is making decisions according to a condition. Right. Mm. A knowledge that you see, something mm. that you saw, mm. according to environments, you know, effects from outside, you have no choice to the body and mind to move like that. And one beautiful thing, I look at the past, when I commit lots of sins, hurting others, hurting people, hurting animals, because I was ignorant at that time. According to all the igno ignorance, conditions, everything you realize, you have no choice to happen exactly, perfectly like that. And then you feel, oh, of course I feel, feel I owe some obligation. I want to make up to them. I apologize. Please, born in future, as my son, my daughter, <laughs> or my pet. Mm -hmm. But you, the beauty is this: you see everything moving by itself, perfectly. The future is already there. Everything is there. You, if you could decide to see what's ahead of you according to all the conditions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, which day you're going to realize you're going to be whatever. Everything is already here. Remember, the yogi knows that, but he, how to say, don't feel like if everything is already there, I'm not going to do anything anymore. No, here, yeah. we are here, changing, moving. That's the trouble, because you still have to make effort. I mean, you still made effort. You know, you woke up early, you taught, you made many hours a day of teaching. How do you know when to make effort then and when not to? Like, what is the right way of flow and what isn't the right way of flow? You have to 
upon uh, reflect upon the laws of karma. The, everything that moves is according to a previous condition in relation with all the other that is moving the same way in condition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's say there is a meditation called seedless, seedless meditation, where you do not make any action, but the mind of you doing action. Mm -hmm. But you are inside, unconcerned. Thoughts come in your head, let's say, oh, I have to do my laundry after the class. And then from here, do it as you realize why the thought came to my head. Because I have dirty laundry. And why they came at this moment? Because it's too much. It's disturbing. And then what else you realize? I don't think. The mind thinks by itself. And then the thought is a project into your consciousness. <laughs> and then if you put all the other things together, according to some knowledge that you are hearing right now, it may affect your decisions tomorrow. <laughs> mm. Oh, I'm not tomorrow, I'm not going to eat fried chicken anymore. <laughs> you see, because what? You make that decision. Yeah. Because the knowledge is from behind. So everything is like that. When you realize that, and then you feel the peace inside, but the peace stay there, but remember we are here in another state of consciousness, dealing with the world, doing the best. Whatever you are doing now, you realize it is already past. You cannot change mm, mm. The, what makes us happy right now. What you have done in the past, right? Right. Remember something you have done in the past that's terrible. Mm. You immediately feel depressed. So that affects our happiness. Then we have another attitude to keep moving. Like the yogi is traveling here, going over there, sharing the way. But inside, I am not doing that. Mm. In the intuition, participate in this divine evolution. Maybe intuition from other gods who say, you should do this now, you go over here. We call it sometimes the subconscious. Now what is the best to participate in helping creation? And then we are here. But we still can, through the mind and the sense of here, enjoy your guacamole, watch your... I love science fiction movies. Oh, really? The one that's nice, not <laughs> stupid thing, but I love to see the Aquaman, <laughs> the day that Earth is to despair, <laughs> to see how things are. I was going to ask you about your hobbies outside yoga. What, what do you do other than yoga? Is there anything that you... Oh, do? I love this feeling of invention. <laughs> to invent things. Let me put it together here, nice and thin, by lying down with the wheel. You really enjoy it. It's a must. I like... Segway, I have Segway. Ah, uh -huh, yeah. I have a smart car. Okay. Oh, I love driving. I have go here. One day I have a dream. One day I want to still skydive. Okay. Maybe hugging someone else, but I wish. I like challenging things. Okay. If it is not possible in this life, I love electric things. Next life, I want to drive a car without wheels. The humming sound. Mm. <laughs> I like to go in outer space one day, space station, do yoga there. So I, let, I have lots of things I want to experience. But inside, 
I don't have any. But I don't have any, but at the same time, I enjoy them. That's the beauty, right. to have your own ego. Mm. I spend lots of time being grateful to have the ego, to have this illusion that you are enjoying the bliss of samadhi. Samadhi is mental activity. But to remember, we have to be with it mm. in order to cope with everything else. So, so just finally to, uh, to conclude, what would you say is the main thrust, the main emphasis of your uh, teaching, of you, of you as a teacher? If someone comes to you, how do you guide them? First, I go straight into health. <laughs> Doing some poses. A good, a good yoga teacher are able to adjust the postures, the asanas for the student according to their condition. Also, the yoga teacher can see their tendency. Some students are more, how to say, fit to go into compassion. I emphasize compassion and the diet. And then gradually I touch them about the end. What is the goal, the essence of yoga? The bliss in the end, the mental power, self-control. And then they have some enthusiasm by knowing that. Right. But you treat people uh, quite differently. You don't give everyone the same information. No. Okay. Well, sometimes if you're in group, you have no choice. Mm -hmm. But some of them may come and ask some questions. And then you give the question according to him. But yes. in general, you say that about health, the goal, everybody catch it. And then emphasize the main breathing, just one breathing, very simple. The alternate rhythm. Nadi Shodhana. Yeah, the others is according to your condition. Okay. And then I don't force anybody to do too much. I emphasize them do little, but frequently, constantly, very little. Do 10 minutes, but Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't miss it. And also emphasize, you have to find the teacher that you like. I don't hold anybody here. I say sometimes, all right, if you don't, if you find some another teacher, yeah. that you, I'll be in bliss, <laughs> in bliss to see you happy with someone else. I don't hold anybody. And I see myself on the other teacher too. I am identified with all the other teachers. So to whoever they That's, go, they are in my hands yeah. and you are. I like that, Steve. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Every student is different. Yeah, yeah. Some students are seeking only what? Mental power up to Raja Yoga, the mental power in the place. So there are teachers who go up to that. Some of them are concerned about health, the alignment, uh, alignment. So there are people in Ashtanga Yoga, like, you know, the uh, hot girl, the Iyengar, Iyenga, teach lots of Ashtanga, lots of concentration, alignment. Yes. So there are teachers who are teaching, but they want to date the students. <laughs> so there are, there are students who want to date the Teacher. <laughs> so they are attracted to each other. There are teachers who want your money <laughs> and, and encourage people only to do asana and breathing for mental power. So there are teachers for that. So everything is perfect. There are yoga for golf players, yoga for politicians. Everything is perfect. But eventually, everything leads to the same goal. There is nothing wrong. Everything. So I emphasize the 
good health first, do the pranayama, and then you'll be able to enjoy some bliss. Pranayama gives you bliss occasionally. And then I encourage people to meditate on here. That's the center of emotion. Lots of meditation here, sometimes you end up crying. You start sensing, believing this being is right here. That will trigger enthusiasm towards the practice. Now, some people, my intellect, the student, meditate here. On the forehead? Yeah, sometimes they start seeing light. Okay. Some divine visions. And then they get, oh my goodness, there's something inside. <laughs> they get enthusiastic. But mm. everything in moderation. Some people don't want any of this. I encourage them, just be nice to your pets. Compassion. Meditate on compassion and sit quietly. Right. right. Sit quietly every day and think about who is controlling everything. <laughs> and then they are going to end up with more questions. <laughs> That's been a wonderful interview, Dharma. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, well, really appreciated it. Thank you. Okay. I have a... Email I Dharma Mitra.